Real Madrid have been in incredible form, winning 12 in the last 13 games, winning their last 10 in a row. But can we replicate that tactic and that form into Football Manager? Let's find out. But before you do, make sure you hit like on this video that is so important to this channel. You can subscribe, you can leave a comment as well. All of that helps the channel. Also, make sure you check out this ad from OneFootball. OneFootball have been amazing enough to sponsor this video and what I need for you guys to do is check out the app. The link will be in the description, it's fairly easy to do, you can download it via the link or you can use the barcode on the screen. The app is a great footballing app, it's where you can check the latest statistics, the latest football news, you can also watch some live free games, yes you heard me right, you can watch free games live for free, for free on the footballing app. It's my favourite place to keep up to date with the most recent football news. You can also find some fantastic analysis and match reports on the OneFootball app as well. If you're attempting to replicate tactics like I do on this channel, you can also use this app to grab the latest match stats and all of that good stuff. So make sure you check out the app, the link is in the description but also you can use the barcode on the screen and trust me, you will not regret downloading this app. Hello people and welcome back to another tactical video. Today we're going to be looking at Real Madrid's tactics, looking at Carlo Ancelotti's key principles, the 4-3-3 and why it's so successful. So in this video, looking at the key principles, looking at the tactic in Football Manager, play a match as well so we can see the tactic play out and lastly before the video ends, we will check the results. So let's get stuck into those key principles. So here we are and of course we've gone with that 4 3, three. and again I'm going to pop up on the screen key statistics that's going to help us create this tactic. So at the moment Real Madrid touches the ball inside the penalty box the most with 25.28 per 90. They do have the second most 1v1 dribbles attempted but that's largely thanks to Vinicius Junior attempting just over 10 dribbles per 90. Their PPDA is at 11.37 which is higher than the league's average at 10.43 so they're not exactly a very intense pressing side. They do have the least ball losses in La Liga with just 75.94 ball losses per game and something else that backs up their impressiveness whilst in possession, they do have the highest passing rate in the league with 16.7 passes per minute of possession. So for the mentality we are going to be using cautious, patiently knocking the ball about and just waiting patiently for that opening. The attacking width is set to wide and hopefully we can create those high and wide overloads that Ancelotti likes to use out on the wider flanks. For the approach play we are going to be playing out from the defence which is key and we need to get Tony Cruz our deep line playmaker on the ball. For the passing directness is set to slightly shorter which is standard with the positive mentality but the tempo is set to slightly lower so we can get a better passing rate and try to complete as many passes as we can per minute. In the final third for the dribbling the creative freedom we have no direct instruction. In transition when the possession has been lost we are going to counter press, we are going to be trying to take the initiative as we are going to be favourites for most part of the season. When the possession has been won we're also going to be making our counter movements. When the goalkeeper is in possession he will look to distribute the ball quickly and take short goal kicks. For out of possession we do have a higher line of engagement and a higher defensive line again trying to take the initiative and the defensive width is set to force the opponents out wide. For the trigger press we do not have an intense trigger press whatsoever we are on slightly more often which is again standard with the positive mentality and then we also have prevent short goalkeeper distribution. We don't have get stuck in we don't have used tight to marking because Real Madrid actually to have the lowest challenge intensity in La Liga which means they don't press intensely neither do they approach their duels aggressively. But that there is the team instructions now let's look at the player roles and their instructions. So in goal which is going to be using a standard goalkeeper I believe actually most of these players do not have a player instruction but for full back the left back we are going to be using a full back on support but the right back he's going to be automatic whilst taking fewer risk and dribbling less mainly because I believe Danny Carvajal or the right back is more of the cautious full back out of the two. 
In central defence, we are using two central defenders, no ball playing defenders because I believe the deep line playmaker, he's going to be responsible for initiating those counter attacks. So in central defence, which is using two central defenders for that Casemiro role, we're using the defensive midfielder on support whilst he's holding his position. In central midfield for Tony Cruz, of course, of course, of course, we have to use that deep line playmaking role. He's going to be closing down more and marking tighter than Mazzala, which is Modric, which we can see with the passes that he received a lot of the passes he received in this game specifically was on that right side and in that right half space on the flanks to try and replicate that Vinicius Junior role we are going to be using the inside forward he's instructed to mark tighter but as we can see he's going to be dribbling more cutting inside taking more risks crossing less often but getting further forward we are trying to replicate that Vinicius Junior form so whoever plays in this role we are going to check in the results how well that player exactly did and on the right flank we are using a winger on support trying to replicate Marco Insensio he's going to be playing more direct passes but also again marking tighter lastly up top for that Karen Benzema role we are using a false nine which can be a deep line forward as well either on support or attack it doesn't really matter false nine or deep line forward it should work similar and it should work well as well but that there is the player roles the player instructions also also actually very important opposition instructions now we are trying to be smart with our pressing triggers and one of the pressing triggers is actually when the opponent is facing towards his own goal so to try and replicate that a little because we can't replicate that exactly when the defenders and the number sixes touch the ball that is when we are going to be triggering our press so those players specifically have trigger press set on them in the opposition instructions but that there is all the important team instructions the player roles and their instructions now we're going to go into the game just to see how the tactic plays out hopefully we get enough highlights to demonstrate this tactic but let's get stuck into that game So this is the team that I've gone with, Courtois in goal, Mendy left back, Lucas Vasquez at right back, Alaba and Eda Menatao at centre back, Casemiro as the holding midfielder, Tony Cruz in his role, the deep line playmaker, Valverde as the Mazzala, I just prefer him as the Mazzala on this game. We do have Hazard on the left rather than Vinicius as he's on the right and then we do have Benzema up top. But for this video's sake, I'm actually just going to swap these two. We're going to have Vinicius Jr on the left for this game and Hazard on the right oppositional instructions all set now let's get stuck in to that game so here we are in the changing rooms and what i'm going to do is point my finger and tell them i expect a performance obviously i'm trying to put a performance on for you guys but i can't exactly find that shout okay we are favorites we should be winning this comfortably and that's exactly what we're going to go with now let's get stuck in i mean hopefully we get to see some highlights in this game as well first five minutes no highlights wonderful stuff from Real Madrid there but we didn't get to see it we are we are making good use of possession currently 71% and two shots at goal there's Valverde penalty and it is it's a penalty to Real Madrid and we can see Valverde just breaking through that channel there as well that Mazzala on attack getting further forward a very dangerous player very dangerous and the penalty has been rewarded who's stepping up it's Eden Hazard I would have rather Benzema to step up for this but it's oh he's missed has Tony Cruz and oh it's 1-0 anyway Tony Cruz has buried it Hazard with the assist but he did miss the initial penalty I feel very sorry for that goalkeeper so it's 1-0 and then it looks like a highlight oh I thought I said RDF for a second <laughs> it's RDT the fake RDF is playing for Mallorca here or Espanol why did I say Mallorca Edita Militao getting stuck in winning that tackle. Herrera, Aitor, Lauren. Oh, don't tell me they've equalized straight away. No. Inches, inches wide. That's poor concentration from Real Madrid there. So the first 20 minutes, Real Madrid are one nil up. Has Eden has it on the ball. Vinicius Jr. inside the box. Dribbling with it. He makes the cross. Oh, it's hit the bar. Valverde has hit the bar. That could have been two. It should have been two. Instead, it's still only one. Espanyol slowly getting back into the game now as well. 30 minutes have gone past and it is only 1-0 to Real Madrid. So that was a fairly decent first half. Nothing exciting so far, nothing special. And let's get stuck back in to that game. It looks like there's a highlight right away. Espanyol with the kickoff. Sergi Gomez on the ball now. Right back, 
driving forward, which is allowing it. Here's Sergi, Loren. Vasquez intercepts the ball. Eden Hazard on the ball now. Vasquez back to Editor Militao. Edis I always say Editor. It's just Edda. Mendy on the ball now. Vinicius. Tony Cruz. Oh, unlucky son. Oh, here's Espanyol on the break now. Pedroza. We've got to get tighter to him, boys. RDT. Oh, Lucas is just giving the ball away there. What's he done? He's going to... Oh, why has the keeper just spilt it? Oh my god. This is not the best performance whatsoever. Espanol with a throw. Editor. Editor. Edda Militao heads it out. David Lopez. Oh, it's intercepted by Mendy. Here's Benzema on the counter attack now. Valverde. One on one. Oh, he's missed. He's missed. He should have buried that one there. Real Madrid with a throw in. Casemiro. Tony Cruz. Mendy. Whips it into Vasquez. Oh! Benzema, no idea what the goalkeeper has done there, but Benzema puts the ball in the back of the net. It's 2-1 to Real Madrid. It's 2-1. We have created a better chances. Of course we have. Of course we have. Diego Lopez kicks it long. Alaba wins it. Valverde plays a nice through ball, but it just doesn't make it to Eden Hazard. Long ball. Alaba intercepts again. Tony Cruz now in the ball. Looks for Casemiro. Benzema, he's through and it's free. Do 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 hey 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 and it's goal awarded it is goal awarded it's 3 1 to Real Madrid for a moment there I thought it could be offside but I did think it was on I did think it was on and there we are that wraps up this game Real Madrid 3 Espanyol 1 what a performance I say what a performance it was decent it was fairly decent very well done and that there is how the tactic can play out for you. Real Madrid 3, Espanyol 1. So, as we can see in the fixtures, that game was the third last game in the La Liga. Because, of course, we've already won the league. We've already won the league. And we did get knocked out in the Copa del Rey. Well, in the final. We lost in the final. Sergio Aguero, God bless his soul, scored in the very last minute. I mean, you just can't be angry at that, can you? What a story for Sergio Aguero. But, in the Champions League, I mean... We got smashed 6-0 at Anfield. There's no hiding it. In the first leg, we had a very, very decent first leg. We beat them 2-0 at home. I thought we had a decent chance of progressing, but we just got absolutely slaughtered at Anfield, which, you know, that can happen on Football Manager. But we actually do have two games left. If we look at the La Liga League, the Satander, you can see that we were champions, or we are champions. We've played 36 so far. We've won 32. We drew one. And we've lost three goal difference of plus 60 and the points tally of 97 but what i'm gonna do is quickly sim the last two games so we can have the full results at the end of the season so let's sim those last two games so we sim the last two games and as you can see we beat mallorca 1-0 away from home vinicius jr with the goal in the 14th minute and then we also drew 1-1 against Levante away from home. Karim Benzema put Real Madrid ahead in the 77th minute before they equalised in the very last minute of the game. But this Levante game, we dominated the game. We had 65% of the ball. We completed 92% of our passes. We had an XG of 2.78, so we actually underperformed. I believe a penalty is 0.70 XG. So we could have scored two more goals in this game as well. We had nine shots on target. I'm guessing the goalkeeper had a very decent game. He did. It was a decent game for Real Madrid, but the league was already wrapped up. It wasn't very important whatsoever. Now, let's look at the results and the data. So, La Liga. We won La Liga. Of course we did. We played 38. We won 33. We drew two. I believe we lost three. Points tally on 101. In the UEFA Champions League, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals. In the Copa del Rey, we lost in the final. And in the Super Copa, we beat Barcelona 3 0 in that final. In La Liga, when we look at the team stats, we have the most points per game. Of course, we do. The. For the most goals, it's Real Madrid on 78, joint first with Barcelona. Most shots for Real Madrid in second place with 579. Fewer shots against is Real Madrid, so we were very decent off the ball. Best pass completion, Real Madrid in 6th place with 92%. We're only 1% behind Real Betis, who have 93 the most. For the most possession, it is Real Betis again, but Real Madrid in 3rd place with 57% of the ball. For the most tackles won, Real Madrid are not in the top 8. For the most dribbles made again, Real Madrid are not in the top 8, which is a little disappointing. It feels like I need to use that run-out defence instruction, 
but I don't necessarily want to because it's not every single player that runs with the ball but Real Madrid do complete the second most or attempt the second most 1v1 dribbles in real life. For the most clean sheets, Real Madrid with 24 clean sheets and for the fewest conceded, Real Madrid again, no surprise, with 17. Now for the player stats for the top goal scorer, Isak is there with 21 so he's not our player, Karim Benzema in 7th place with 14 goals, Marco Asensio also had a very decent goal scoring season with 14. For the most assists, Federico Valverde which is fairly surprising, I would have thought Tony Cruz. For the most shots, nobody in the top 8 for Real Madrid. For the most man of the match awards, we have Marco Asensio in 5th place. For the most key passes, we finally do have Tony Cruz in 4th place on 121. For the best pass completion, I accidentally pressed on that centre back. For the best pass completion, we don't have anybody in the top 8. Most tackles won, again nobody there for us. For the most dribbles made, way. We do have Vinicius Junior on 101, thank god for that. And for the most clean sheets we have Courtois on 24, views conceded Courtois on 17. And now we're in a data hub where we can look at well, some data I guess. Now looking at the pass map, you can see this is our pass map from the most previous game against Levante and right now I'm going to pop up the real life pass map from their most previous game against Atletico Madrid where they won 2-0. For the attacking efficiency, Real Madrid were aggressive and we were clinical. So going forward, we were very decent and defensively we were sound as well. We had a quiet defence and we were also impenetrable. Looking at the goal output, again just to back up how good we were going forward and how good we were defensively, we were high scoring but we were also impenetrable which we've already said, we've already discovered that. Looking at the scoring, we were high scoring and we were clinical with our shooting as well. We can see the conversion rate just over 13% there and we are around 2 goals per game or just over 2 goals per game. Looking at the possession as well, we infrequently win the ball mostly because we were always in possession and we were reliable in possession as well once we were in possession which again is very nice to know because we do want to have a decent passing per minute rate as well. Looking at the movement, we did complete fewer dribbles which is fairly disappointing. As a team I expected a little bit more but I'm guessing it's because of the roles that we are using, only the inside forward and winger have dribble more instructed. But we can see fewer dribbles though we were frequently fouled frequently fouled and lastly we can look at where we attempted most of our passes more passes were made in the middle third than expected and we did make most of the passes just before that halfway line so we were a fairly positive side taking control of the game knocking the ball about you can see we completed far more passes attempted than average 744 passes attempted per game compared to the average team with just 624 passes so you can see we did complete more passes than average. <laughs> now let's look at the squad stats, who were the top goal scorers and who were the highest assists. Now before closing this video we can look at the top goal scorers, Karim Benzema scored 22 goals in all competitions, Eden Hazard scored 17 in 41 starts, Marco Asensio scored 14 in 19 starts, Luka Jovic he scored 10 in 18 starts. Looking at the most creative players or the players with the most assists, Tony Cruz with 15 assists in all of the competitions, Federico Valverde on 12 assists, Eden Hazard on 7, Kamavinga on 6 along with Luka Modric. But unfortunately that wraps up this video, I hope you guys have enjoyed it, make sure you check out the tactic, the link will be in the description below as well. If you are new and you are enjoying this type of content, make sure you are subscribed, leave a comment and like this video. All of that is important in helping this video, but more importantly, the channel grow as well. Shout out to my Patreons. I'll see all of you guys soon. Stay safe, peace out and God bless.